It's one of the oldest names in the retirement industry. The Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association, or TIAA, is one of the leading providers of financial services. And its investment management arm, known as Nuveen, manages over $900 billion in assets and strongly believes in investing in alternatives globally as a way to diversify portfolios. Let's bring in the man who runs Nuveen, Vijay Advani. He joins us in Hong Kong for an exclusive interview this morning. Vijay, welcome. Great to be here. Uh, great to have you. You know, before we even talk a little bit about the, the pension industry and what's in store for 2018, I kind of want to ask about MidFid2, which, of course, launched this week. We're still not sure if markets are really prepared for this, but for someone on the buy side, huge implications when it comes to research costs, how to raise capital. How does Nuveen de deal with these changes? So I think we are fairly well prepared. Um, uh, we, um, uh, you're, you're seeing a fee pressure because of MIFID too. I mean, not only are you seeing passive investments taking off over the past several years, but now with MIFID, uh, you know, diversifying, uh, differentiating between uh, research and trading uh, is going to impact the industry. And I think it's early days to see how fund managers actually adapt to that. So we'll see how it goes. Well, large fund managers, we've heard uh, some are choosing to at least absorb some of these research costs. What's going to be Naveen's strategy in, in approaching this? Is it going to be putting the cost to investors or are you going to be absorbing it? I think we we'll probably absorb the cost. We'll also see, you know, what's going to happen. There will be a disruption of asset managers. Some of the smaller firms uh, may not be able to survive uh, because of the increased cost, increased uh, emphasis on risk management, compliance, and all the other factors. So I think you're going to see a fairly change, a big change in the asset management industry, especially in Europe. Yeah, already seeing quite a bit of that, uh, even when it comes mm -hmm. to alternative managers and, and, and traditional asset managers as well. Uh, moving along, I guess, to talk a little bit more about the pension industry. I mean, the interest rate backdrop, of course, has been a source of trouble overall. You know, But we are seeing the developed markets at least begin this normalization path. Does this change your perspective when it comes to how we're going to get better returns in 2018? Are you factoring higher rises in rates? Yeah, I mean, we're going to see an uh, a increase in rates, but it's at a slow pace. Uh, so we out here, I'm you know, visiting Asia right now and encouraging our clients and partners to diversify into outcome-oriented uh, yield-seeking investments, customized solutions, mm. as well as alternatives, especially in the real assets world where that's a perfect hedge for a um, for any client that wants to uh, reduce the volatility and increase the yield. Uh, VJ, I'm curious. You know, uh, I, I know you run the business and not so much looking at you know at where to put your money or the or the investment strategy. But I'm curious as you're bringing on new uh, investors, uh, what are what are what is top of mind? What are you hearing from them? I think the biggest concern that most investors have is, you know, we've had a great bull run uh, uh, in 2017 and, frankly, even before that. Uh, how do they tamper some of the volatility going forward? Because you need one geopolitical issue to really impact the stock market. And so we at Naveen, through our 13 uh, you know, affiliates, uh, our 13 boutiques, mm -hmm. are encouraging clients, encouraging partners to diversify into alternatives, into timber, agribusiness, real estate, uh, and customized solutions where you see yield and lower volatility. You know, are you hearing a lot more about uh, socially conscious investing, ESG investing? We know that's a growing, uh, you know, a, a, a growing issue. We saw some of that uh, erupt in Japan. Are you hearing more about that, a wider acceptance of that? It's a great question. We are seeing this uh, across the globe. It started in Australia and a few countries in, uh, in uh, Europe, but uh, you're seeing a big emphasis of ESG here in, uh, in Asia. I was in Singapore yesterday, Hong Kong uh, today, and that's a consistent theme. And at Naveen and TIA, we've been doing that for over 40 years. So this is not a new phenomenon for us. We've been doing it for th uh, over 40 years, and so we are the go-to uh, asset manager for ESG. Yeah, from a policy point of view, it seems like China is also spearheading this with ESG. I mean, not in terms of policy, though. I mean, climbing down on pollution, mm -hmm. they want to eliminate poverty, you know, food safety. Does that impact where you approach in this market, too? Yeah, I think both on a policy basis. I mean, we at uh, TI Naveen have uh, participated in a variety of uh, 
uh, fronts uh, from uh, helping governments on policy, mm. but also putting your money where your mouth is. One thing, having the regulations and the policy, but the other factor is investing in ESG or um, you know products. And uh, so we're seeing that here in China. We're seeing that there's a big emphasis in Japan. Uh, and of course, Australia, Hong Kong, and Singapore as well are very fast. They're following very fast. Yeah, and obviously we see such so much growth in this part of the region, growing middle class. We're all mm -hmm. seeing these rises in these Asian sovereign wealth funds as well. I mean, does Nuveen see that as a threat? Or an opportunity. I mean, how are you tapping into this flush of money? No, I think we basically see this as an opportunity. As as you know, most of our footprint outside of the U.S. is on the institutional side. Yeah. We are yet fairly small on the retail. Only about nine percent of our flows come from outside of the U.S. But that's going to increase as we build out our footprint here in Asia. We are actively working with millennials, with policymakers, uh, with institutions on ESG, and uh, we hope we are actually very excited about our opportunity here in Asia.